Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Faust Rogero. Faust Rogero is a psychologist and the author of four books, including Fix Your Anger Handbook, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And you can find out more about Faust Rogero and his wonderful work at his website, faustrogero.com. Welcome, Faust Ruggiero. Catherine, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks so much for inviting me. So, Faust Ruggiero, here we are at the Natural Healing Show. And we're talking about an emotion that, as humans, we all experience, which is anger. How does anger affect the body's ability to heal itself and to remain in a state of homeostasis? You know, that's that's a, such a great question, Catherine. We we uh, you know, the body wants to remain in that state. The body wants to be in balance. And everything I teach is about balance and getting yourself balanced. Uh, anger hits us on all different levels. It takes the body uh, and tightens everything up. It hits every system, every organ in the body. Uh, you know, uh, we, we are uh, people who in old primal ways of, of behaving, we, we, we dealt with uh, flight and fight. Uh, anger puts us right back in that mode, but it extends it, which is not supposed to happen. So the, the strain on the body is huge, as well as the emotions, the intellect, and the spirit. It just takes everything in, 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 you know, in our being out of balance. Now, my understanding is that when we feel angry, and and I, I read this statistic years ago that five minutes of anger raises the stress hormone cortisol for six hours. And so it takes, so if you think of anger like a drug, it's very adrenalizing and it can give people energy. So initially it can, you know, feel, give you energy, but then we have to clear and process the stress chemicals from the anger. What is your, am I correct about that? Or what is your understanding of the hormonal effects of anger? The hormonal effects, not with just cortisol, with all the hormones, it's, it's just so significant. I always tell people, people, you think, well, I just got angry and it lasted for five minutes. You know, it's the it's the body preparing to go into anger. All the systems tighten up. Um, uh, all the organs are now under under assault. And then we hit the, that angry expression and everything explodes. And then after that, if you think about it, that's when you feel your body get tired and you want to sit down or lay down. That's your body trying to recover from everything you've done. So this thing is not just the, the amount of time you're angry. It's what perceives that what you know what directs you into the angry mood the whole angry episode and then the attempt from your body to try to recover from that it could take hours now what effect does anger have on the body's cardiovascular skeletal neurological and sensory systems and that's you know you think about it when you're getting into a fight everything gets it, it, it is more acute your vision your hearing your senses they have to be that way because the brain assumes we're under assault so everything is clear now so you're ready to respond the skeletal system tightens up and braces for impact the muscles are now contracting with more adrenaline so now you're getting all that being pumped through your body and and everything, it, it, the cardiovascular system, the blood is going faster. The heart is pumping uh, uh, harder. You're trying to get more oxygen. That's the brain saying, okay, we, we're under assault. We need more resources. All these things that typically are not supposed to happen. And, and, and they will happen from time to time. But when we're angry people, and they happen daily, you can imagine the wear and tear on the body. And my understanding also, Faust Ruggiero, is that 
anger raises our blood pressure. Can you explain for our audience how anger affects our blood pressure? Well, anytime you're raising the whole the cardiovascular system's input output uh, a way of, of behave of of, of, of uh, doing things. What happens is now more blood is pumping through the body because again the muscles are calling for it. But what you know, and those are the things. People who are angry and angry a lot of time are more prone to heart attacks, are more prone to stroke, because you're put you're you're putting so much pressure. You're calling for that system to work so hard and so fast. Again, it's not designed to do that. Once in a while, one thing. All the time, no. What effect does anger have on a person's internal language? So you're a psychologist, and you've published this wonderful book, Fix Your Anger Handbook. So how does that affect our self-talk and what we're saying to ourselves? You know, Catherine, that's really twofold. You know, we always think that uh, anger expresses what we think and feel. It all, uh, I'm sorry, language, but it also directs what we think and feel. So if we're angry people, if you think about it, if you're angry, it starts in your head and the the internal language is getting angry, and it's it's you're already getting ready to attack. And usually, what we think is what we're going to do. So now the circumstance calls for you to assert yourself, and as opposed to brokering a, a you know a good situation and being nego uh, willing to negotiate and be more diplomatic, you come out with with gusto, if you will. You come out with anger because you've already your mind's already prepared for it. So here we are at the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. So in your professional opinion, as a psychologist and the author of your Fix Your Anger handbook, how does anger and feeling angry all the time inhibit our ability to heal? Well, the simplest explanation for that is we are directing all our resources or the majority of resources to that angry expression when we're talking about the body healing the body in order to heal must draw on our resources if they're being directed to something else well now the body doesn't have those resources in addition as we're angry we keep on assaulting the body so now we're saying all right let's heal but we keep on assaulting it and taking the energy away the body is left trying to figure things out so uh, healing time is longer it's less efficient and in some cases it doesn't occur great information and one of the things that we know about our hormones is there's a phenomena called cortisol steel and when we're chronically stressed the body shifts over from the production of our regular hormones and by regular hormones this is all our sex hormones and and into the production of adrenaline and cortisol so yeah now you have just published Fix Your Anger Handbook, and this is your fourth book. What motivated you to write a handbook on how to heal from anger? You know, Catherine, when you uh, have been counseling as long as I have, I'm 38 years in private practice, uh, and you, you see a lot of this. And, uh, you know, it, it, people think it's just, you know, with psychologists, we just work with the mind and we try to get you to do things different and be happier. But if we're doing it right, we look at all the systems in the body. And when I see the effect anger is having on people, they're not sleeping, they're not eating right. They're not communicating. Uh, they come in with far more physical problems than those people who are calmer. So, you know, when I looked at all that, I said, well, you know, I, I, I'm doing this in my practice. So let's get, let's get a text out there that goes through all these things, explains all this chapter by chapter and gives advice, which I think is what people are looking for. Now there's a spiritual book called a course in miracles and in a course in miracles, it says there's no justified resentments. So how can understanding that anger is actually bad for us motivate us to give up all our resentment or some of our resentment anyway well it doesn't you know anger is really something that keeps those re those resentments active and and when we're angry we have a tendency to to convince ourselves that well there's a reason for this 
and I this happened, so that's why I got angry. The truth of the matter is we don't have good self-control and we we get angry. There are other ways to do this. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there's no excuse. The, the chemicals are all going to be manufactured. We get to choose how we want those to be manufactured. And if we're going to get angry, then we get the cortisol. We get the adrenaline, which is good, but not all the time and not in large doses all the time. So, you know, we have we have some control over this. Now, is there a difference in the effect on the body between rapid but short-lived anger and chronic anger? Yeah, the rapid short-lived anger. And you see those people all the time. Those are the ones you watch what you say. Uh, you know, and, you know, we, we say they can turn on a dime. You never know what you're getting. They're angry a lot. Uh, not just at other people. They're angry in their mind. They're the ones that are constantly negative, and they're 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 uh, something goes goes just off a little, which maybe you and I might say, "Wow, well, you know, okay, that that happened. We'll fix it." They're going to get scream and yell first, so their blood pressure is up a lot of the time. The, it, 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 when it hits, it's far more traumatic on the body because it's extreme. It's just that real quick, uh, rapid thrust. The other types of anger tend to be. Now, they're not displayed with the, the, the intensity that rapid anger is, but they have a tendency to be there more more often. So it, it's a, a, a on a scale of one to 10, so to speak, instead of a 10, it's a five, but it's always there. So both of them do damage. Rapid anger does more damage in shorter periods of time. But the other anger... It, it 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 affects all different portions of our life. It affects our relationships. So it's not just the angry outburst. It's what it does to our relationships. It's what it does to our ability to communicate. So that that undercurrent is always there. Faust Ruggiero, author of Fix Your Anger Handbook. How does the pace of our life affect holistic living and natural healing when it comes to anger? Well, when you think about Captain, that's just a great question. The pace of our life, I, for me, if, if, if I'm in a uh, you know a moment, uh, an hour, or so where I've got to get things done real fast, you know that the system is already accelerated, and acceleration and anger go hand in hand. I, you know, when I'm working with people and I say, okay, we want to get the physical, because that's where you start. You start with the physical part of this. I say, if you're getting up in the morning and you're having three or four or five cups of coffee, and then you drink sodas and you have energy drinks and you're going real fast from point to point, you are far more likely to be angry than the person who gets up and kind of has everything laid out, maybe has a cup of coffee or doesn't. I'm one of these people that never does. And the day just goes by. You go from point to point very efficiently and you don't feel overwhelmed. The body's not tight. The mind isn't trying to figure it out. The emotions aren't overreacting. So yeah, the, the pace of our lives, huge. I always tell people, first thing, let's slow down a little bit. A, so your body can uh, do what it needs to do, but B, so you can process the information I'm giving you. Great information. Now, in my 31 years of experience in natural healing, among the many issues that I've helped people with is actually binging and eating disorders. And when I'm working with people with various kinds of eating disorders, whether it's binging or anorexia, one of the big triggers for eating issues is actually anger. And there's an acronym HALT uh, overeating, which is don't let yourself get too hungry, too angry, too lonely, or too tired. How does anger affect our appetite and our desire to eat? Well, again, once the when the body's in that fight or flight kind of a kind of a way of living, eating is the last thing we're thinking about. Angry people tend to be people who either eat real fast and just get it in there, or they starve themselves. They tend to go to extremes. That's what anger does. That's the real key that we look at. It takes the body and the mind, the emotions, all of us, all every part of us into extremes. And when we get into extremes, we're not thinking about nourishment. We're not thinking about doing things the right way. We're thinking about what, what's right in front of our face and how we're gonna deal with it and how we're gonna deal with it quickly. And with that, let's take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan. 
medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. We're listening to Faust Rajaro, author of the Fix Your Anger Handbook. And he's explaining to us how bad anger is for us and what we need to do differently. We'll be right back. Alice Ruggiero, author of Fix Your Hanger Handbook. In my work as a medical intuitive healer, and I'm sure in your work also, you find that many people are on pharmaceutical drugs. And when I have clients who are on many drugs, multiple drugs, one of the things that I encourage them to do is to look up the side effects of their medications, A, and B, look at how all these drugs are interacting in their body. How do pharmaceutical drugs affect our anger? Or are there any drugs that you know about that make us feel more angry? For example, steroids. <laughs> you know, and, and steroids certainly will do that. Uh, but, you know, we, we never know how a person is going to react to a medication. You know, they're designed to do specific things. But, you know, th but, you know, we can't guarantee that. When I started practicing almost four decades ago, 5% of the people came in who came in the office were on these medications and I got them through what they needed to get through just fine because they learned how to, to take the steps and make that all this part of their life. They learned what to do. Uh, but uh, today, everything is quick. Uh, medications are in the picture. Now, probably 60, 70 percent of the people come into my office and they're already on medications. They're being prescribed by doctors who are not saying, I'm going to give you this antidepressant, but get counseling too, because you know there's some concerns. They give it, they say, come back in a month and we'll check and see how it's doing. Not having any idea what happened after they start to take that medication. So are, are, are medications involved? Uh, are they increasing suicide rates? Sure they are, because they're not monitored properly. Um, are they making people more angry? Yeah, there there is an, an adjustment time to the medication. There are side effects which they are not telling you about. And when they switch medications, they often just cold turkey, you're off. Here's the new one. And you want to talk about people that, whose minds and emotions, their bodies are constantly in transition. Does it lead to anger? Sure. Uh, being temperamental, uh, coming to the end of your rope, all those kinds of things. Sure, uh, you know we're not doing a good job with medicine. My my, that's always last the last ditch effort for me. Or if they come in, my goal, even if I don't talk to them about, it, is to say, try to get you off this stuff. If we get you doing the right things, you may not need that, but they are so convinced that they do. Great information. So Faust. Rajaro, once we recognize that feeling angry all the time is not good for us, that it's suppressing our hormones and and um, inhib literally inhibiting our ability to heal, right? Because we have to go into an alpha state where we relax in order to turn on our healing hormones. Once we realize that all this anger is bad for us, how do we stop being such an angry person? Well, that's a learning process, Catherine. I mean, get it, you know, if you can if you can do this on your own, that's great. And you can, you know, read books and that's great. But I, you know, in, in this particular book, more than any other book I've written, I keep on stressing the need for help. Mm -hmm. If you're angry, you're getting to the point where you're not reasoning through things. If it's happening all the time, uh, it could be there's circumstances of your life. It could be past traumas that you never uh, addressed there's your undercurrent for anger i always say make an appointment with someone talk about it learn some uh, new things we, we we talk about coping skills to get you started but it's learning other ways to think and behave and and when you do that 
your chances of recovery are so much more significant. Now, in my work as a medical intuitive healer, Faust Ruggiero, I talk about how your thoughts and your beliefs control your emotions. So what I think and what I feel affect how, what I think and what I believe affects how I he feel. How, what thoughts contribute to feeling anger? Typically, the thoughts that contribute, again, are, are, are the unresolved past issues or things that are happening in our lives today that we're not addressing well. We, what people do is, instead of say, going to someone and saying, I, can I talk to you about something? I have some concerns. They play this scenario in their head. They actually have conversations in their head about what's going on. And by the time they get to that person, they're already angry. And then the delivery is intense. And the person comes back the same way. And you have this, this uh, heated conflict. And I just tell people, if there's an issue, you need to look at it and say, if it's something from the past, can I do this myself? If not, go get help for it. If you have someone you're dealing with today that is a problem and you don't know what to do, talk to someone, talk to a friend. You don't have to go to counseling, but get it out of your own head. That Get someone else who you know is a rational thinker to say, okay, let me ask you some of the questions. Let me, let me, let's look at this and see if there aren't, there aren't some different ways you can deal with it. Now, as you know, Faust Ruggiero, um, the statistics on suicide, especially among people under the age of 30 are quite alarming. And that suicide is one of the top 10 causes of death here in the US. How does anger and feeling angry raise our risk for suicide? Well, it's, it's a two, it's a two part uh, component, two, two components to that. The, the first one is that if we are angry most of the time, we're, we're in that negative energy mode. So we keep on pumping our body and our emotions and our mind with all this negative energy. And of course, what now we get ourselves into situations where maybe we're now we're getting depressed. You know, anger itself, angry people tend not to be suicidal. But what happens is the depressive component enters the picture. And now they're angry and they're depressed and now the anger will actually, through the depression, fuel the decision to make the, to, I'm, I'm not going to continue living. Or the depression gets so intense that there's no way out. And they decide that that's the best way to go. But anger, depression, suicide, all, all go hand in hand. So that is brings me to my next question. In your professional opinion, Faust Ruggiero, what is the relationship between anger and depression? One description of depression that I've heard is that depression is anger turned inwards. What is your observation? Well, people like to, to go with those real quick kind of cliche things. Really, when you get into depression, particularly depression, you really have to start again with the body. Are the, are the neurotransmitters being produced like they should be? Those are the... Are the uh, the chemicals that stimulate the brain. When we talk about depression, those in my profession, we talk about clinical depression. We're really talking about a depressed activity in the brain, not sadness, not I, I, I feel lousy and I can't get out of this. It's depressed activity. The brain needs these chemicals to do everything it does. And you know, it's thinking, it's the way you feel, it's how it regulates your body because the, the brain helps the body regulate every system in the body. So if that's not working well and those neurotransmitters either are imbalanced or, 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 or just not being produced, we need to, we need to define that first. Um, so can uh, depression be anger turn inward? Yeah, but you know, that, that takes time. Uh, you know, it, again, depression and anger are related, but they are not the same thing. Uh, and anger can be in the picture with depression, but not necessarily. You do not have to be an angry person to be depressed. Now, recently, I was watching an interview with the brain expert, Dr. Daniel Amen, and he said something quite interesting. He said in his professional observation, 
Many people with ADD or ADHD, attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, tend to get angry as a way to stimulate the brain, their brains. What is your observation as the author of the How to Fix Your Anger Handbook? What's your relationship, your observation about the relationship between ADD and ADHD and the tendency to get angry or to be argumentative? The key there is conscious verse versus unconscious. The brain learns, but it doesn't always have to be conscious in its learning capacity. Uh, so uh, in situations and I, with the people I've worked with, with both of those ADD and ADHD, uh, they will often use anger but it's not a conscious decision to do it. But the brain learns that if it's pumping more of those chemicals into the brain, the adrenaline especially, the person is more tuned in. And so in those situations, they will be more tuned in. I'm not gonna tell you that their, their uh, behavior is more efficient <laughs> because the anger is driving it. However, you will uh, sometimes angry people when they come into a doctor's office, the ADD and ADHD diagnosis is missed because the anger makes it look as though they are tuned in. So it can do that, and the brain can use to uh, learn to use it. However, I don't think uh, people with ADD and ADHD say, "Well, you know, if I get angry, I'm going to feel better." It just the brain knows it, so it goes there. So what you're saying, it's an unconscious pattern. It, it really is. The brain, and not everything with the brain does is conscious. <clears throat> you know, the thing it, it's some of the things it, it does every day are just designed to run our bodies, you know. Uh, uh, so without going into all the medical parts of that, some things like breathing and, and, um, and, and those types of systems in the body, the brain, you know, you breathe. You don't think about, I'm going to breathe. The brain just does it. In these situations, it's akin to that. The, the brain understands that when it's angry, it gets more efficient. So it'll call on some energy and, uh, you know, people will use that in order sometimes to, to think a little, a little more clearly. So Faust Ruggiero, author of Fix Your Anger Handbook, what are, and you've talked about the importance of getting help, which I agree, because a lot of these are patterns that just are so unconscious and built in or maybe even learned behavior patterns from our family they're just running us without much awareness what are your top recommendations to stop anger in our tracks when we realize okay i'm getting angry what do you recommend you know you're, you're stepping into what we call coping device territory uh that's where you know okay i know i get angry i can get angry this person you know, I get in, I'm involved that often seems to make me angry. What, what's the first, first order of business, remove yourself from the situation. If you can mm. pause, you know, and, and, and take a walk, think about it. Um, you try to slow things down when you get angry, it goes very fast. And if you're in one of those situations, you're going to respond quickly. Now, when you're responding quickly and you are angry, it's that I go to the I go for the jugular kind of thing. I'm going to get you on this. So you do things to calm yourself down, to remove yourself from the situation. The other thing is, you know, we talk about getting in the angry episode and then trying to do something. Now you're in it and you're already angry. The key is really to learn how to become a less angry person in your daily activity so that when you go into a situation which might have a better solution. If you didn't get angry, you stay away from doing so. And so those, that's where I tell people, calm your body down in your routine day. Get those stimulants out of your body. Get on a sleep schedule, makes sense. Eat properly. Uh, start that internal language, which isn't angry. If you're having problems with these things, get help for it. But you need to get your body in what we introduced this whole discussion with, in, back into homeostasis, where it needs to be. If it's not if it's not balanced and you get into an angry episode, whatever energy you typically use is the one you're going to call on and if you're angry a lot of the time, you will call on that energy. So one of the best coping devices is to get healthy in the rest of your life. Great information. And with that, let's take a, another break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. We've been listening to 
psychologist Faust Ruggiero talk about his new book, Fix Your Anger Handbook. My name is Catherine Kierigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author, and we'll be right back. Faust Ruggiero, author of Fix Your Anger Handbook. As you know, with a lot of this anger that we experience as part of being human, there's a range <laughs> between someone who just is like resentful or grumpy and someone who actually hurts or harms other people. When some, and as you know, also sometimes people can be sent to court ordered anger management classes. If we recognize, gee, I am this angry person, how can we learn to be a less angry person? What does that process look like? Well, the process is, as we've been talking about it, slowing yourself down, uh, learning how to think before you act, you know, intellect over emotion, so to speak, is, what I, is the way I always deliver it, is getting your brain to work before your emotions take over. But these are all things that take time to, to learn. The, the question I, tell, I ask people is, if you can't do this on your own, if you keep trying and it's not working, are you willing to go get some help? You talk about anger management. It's, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It just means, it could mean something as simple as physically, your body quickly engages in a fight mode and you're ready to go. So get some help for that. <clears throat> Start with your primary physician. Get your get, go get the blood work done. Let's see where all the all the uh, hormonal levels are. That's a great place to start. Uh, if everything comes back normal, then you look at all right. Am I holding on to some old past stuff? You may think you let go of it, but if it comes up in your mind every so often, you probably didn't. You may want to talk to someone. That's the the kind of the one two punch. Get it get it yeah, your body checked make sure that things are where they're supposed to be physically and then get someone to talk to at least once or twice where you can put it all out there and they can say, well, based on what you say, I'm seeing these kinds of things. And maybe you, you, you now can put a plan together to help you get through this. Great information. Now, Faust Ruggiero, one of my books is called Unlimited Energy Now, which is about how to get your you know, restore your energy once we're exhausted. In your professional opinion, how does anger and feeling chronically angry lead to chronic exhaustion? Well, when you think about it, we're back to energy resources. You know, we, in, in, in our culture, we talk so much about time management, but we don't talk enough about energy management. You, you get up in the, in the morning and between that time you get up and the time you go to bed, you have a certain energy allotment, so to speak, that works for your body. If you're using a lot of that up, more than you should, because you're angry, your body's going fast, all the resources are going to supply that anger and all that, uh, that, that comes from that, then you're going to have some issues with that. And you, you know, you're, 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 you're not going to be healthy. You're not going to recover fast enough. You're, you're, you, you just need to learn how to understand that if I'm doing this, it requires X amount of energy. I get my, my people to think about it. If you're going to run to the store, how much energy is involved in getting in, doing all the things you do and getting back? That's how much. It's like when you go into a store and say, well, I'm going to buy that, that shirt. Well, I know it should cost $30. Am I willing to spend $100 on it? Well, if that's the case, you've exhausted more money than you should. It's that way with energy. If you're going to put more energy out in a given situation than it requires, you don't have enough for the rest of your time, your, your, of your life. You're going to get exhausted and you're going to try to persevere, but you're just not going to have the resources to do so. Great information. Now, Faust Ruggiero 
explain how you use the process of purging um, in your when with your clients. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Someone comes in, Catherine, and says, "This is the problem I have." Uh, you know, I, I'm stressed all the time and I'm angry. And I say, okay, we, we, we go through the physical things. Then I'm going to say, let's look at what you're doing that may be contributing to this. The purging is essentially, let's remove things that support the anger, not your own tranquility, your own homeostasis. And that's where I get into how many cups of coffee and what's the pace of your life like, um, uh, you know. How many things are you trying to do at one time? Because that's another thing. People get up with a list of things and they're, you look at the list and it's just not realistic for the day. Are you wasting time and then having to quickly run back and, and cram all these things in there? I want to get all those things that don't work out of the picture because I can give you all this great advice to move you forward. But if you keep on doing those things, it's like I'm, I've taught you how to swim, but now we're going to put an anchor around you. You're going to keep on sinking. So uh, I want to get those things that don't work out, out of the picture real quick. So Faust with Joe, can you give an example of one of your clients who you've empowered to go from an angry person to maybe a peaceful, more centered person? That's easy. You know, and I've had many. Um, take uh, uh, the example of a fellow who... Um, uh, was sent to me, court ordered, came out of uh, the jail when he went in. It was a simple assault case. He did two or three months. He didn't do a long time, but had a history of the anger. So I went through, you know, he came to me and I said, all right, you know, you've got to be here. You know, you're going to be here. They want you here for the traditional 12 to 16 uh, visits. So let's use this to your advantage. You got to be here anyway. Now we, we started with the physical, with the family history and saw there's anger in the family, there's substance abuse in the family, there's high blood pressure uh, and, and, and lots of anger. So we know the family history was there. We know what he saw. So he learned to do those things. And then we looked at everything he was doing. He was a, a person that liked uh, to be revved up, if you will. So he would, the coffee was there, the energy drinks were there. He would go into the local convenience store and buy the energy, energy drinks and the stacker pills and all those kinds of things. So he was always flying. So we got all those things and systematically took them out of his life. And then we, we, we started working with some coping things when he started to get angry. And then we started going with internal language and then the willingness to talk about something before it gets to an angry episode. Um, and uh, I saw him for, for the 12 times he actually came back on the, on his 12th visit and says, can we keep on going? Mm -hmm. So I saw the man for about, I think it was six or seven months. And, and, and this was years ago, every year he comes back for his tune-ups as he calls them two sessions and just, you know, keeps the process going. It works if you're willing to apply the time that it takes to, to make the, the, the internal changes. Great information. Now, when we get angry, how does angry anger contribute to self-destructive behavior? Because people who listen to the Natural Healing Show, we're all trying to be healthier people. But when we get angry, how can that wreck our plans? It takes everything that we're doing, Catherine, and just stops it in its tracks. And it, all the resources you're thinking your emotions, uh, what the chemicals your body's producing, everything goes negative and to anger. It goes to do just that. So when you're talking about natural healing, what, what does it do? It takes natural healing and stops it. And I don't mean slows it down, it stops it. Because now everything consciously and unconsciously you're doing is going there. Even your unconscious sympathetic uh, nervous system, all that, they're all tuned in to supplying you with what you need to either fight or run away. So learning how to be a, a, a calmer person, one that doesn't rely on anger, one that's not reactive all the time, really gives your body a chance to use all its resources where they need to go. The other thing about healing, people think you have to do something 
that hurts yourself or something breaks or something, you know, it's an injury and that's where you heal. The body is in healing mode all day long. That's the key people have to understand because what we do is wear and tear on the body all day long. So the body is giving resources to, to, to help us come back and, and you know, homo, again, homeostasis. Again, uh, what, what we're using, the energy we're using, it's resupplying. If we're getting angry, that process stops or slows almost to a halt. So Faust Rogero, you're human, I'm human, and anger is a, a, a typical human emotion, and we all get angry sometimes. Um, so for myself, for example, I live in Atlanta. I really don't like driving in Atlanta, especially at rush hour. <laughs> driving in Atlanta is like driving, like navigating an obstacle course. And so when I notice I'm getting angry while I'm driving, I try to do breathing exercises. As the author of Fix Your Anger Handbook, what do you do when you notice you're feeling angry? We're back to that piece I, I mentioned earlier. All day long, those breathing exercises, I do those all day long uh, because uh, the oxygen is essential for your body. It expands your lungs. Lung capacity and, and good health go hand in hand. And it slows it slows my body down because those have to be done slowly. It puts my mind in a position to focus on what I'm doing right in the present. So it takes my mind off of those things that, you know, have been going sideways so things like that uh, i i exercise i have a workout center so to speak in in my home and i i'm in there at least an hour a day uh some people do yoga and prayer and all those kinds of things that those self-care things if you will that allow you to keep your body uh in homeostasis balanced and and, and allow your body to keep healing so i i do them all day long people who do that uh, are, are much less inclined to react in situations that may call for anger. Great information. Now, as a medical intuitive healer, um, when I'm working with somebody who's angry, one of the tools, that, a very simple tool that I use is forgiveness. How important is forgiveness to letting go of anger? It is extremely important. You have to def we have to define what forgiveness means. People look at that and say, somebody did something to me. I say, okay, fine, I forgive you and we're done. It's not that. <clears throat> forgiveness holds on to angry, negative energy. It's as simple as that. You, and mean, I always, you mean lack of forgiveness. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and what happens is people, uh, people will come in and they'll say, you know, this, I'm mad at this one and this one hurt me. And I said, well, okay, you didn't forgive it. So every day you live with it uh, or every other day, whenever you think about it. So it keeps up, keeps coming up, robs you of, of a pleasure state you could have had if you didn't focus on that. Takes an old thing that was dead and you gave it life, more energy going there. And you may just respond or react to it with someone else. Or if not that person, to some innocent person who you're angry with because you're carrying that. Forgiveness for me is about me letting go so I can have my energy to myself. I, I don't want to give it to them and they're not even in my life anymore. I want it for myself. Great information. Now, one of the tools that I use for forgiveness is forgiveness mantras. For example, one of the best ones known, well-known forgiveness mantras is Opona Pona, and there's others as well. How do you get your clients to forgive? For me, it's to, first of all, to define. I want to know what we need to forgive. Where did it come from? <clears throat> sometimes it's other people. And sometimes it's us having to forgive ourselves. You know, guilt and shame are great driver, uh, you know, great motivators for anger and, and, and horrible self feelings. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to take it apart and see what uh, what we have then i i i, I devised the program specifically for them okay based on what you said the and what you're doing and what we need to purge now let's put a program together specifically for you and, and that's what that's always the way i work with everyone i don't have any 
uh, template, so to speak, that I use for people. It's it's what you bring in. You're an individual. I'm going to respect that fact that you're an individual, and I'm going to put a program together just for you. So, Faust Ruggiero, author of Fix Your Anger Handbook, any final thoughts for our audience? A couple things. Uh, one thing we didn't mention is um, the whole so social contact we like to maintain. I, I will guarantee you that people who spend more than a, an hour or two on their cell phone are angrier people. Mm. And I find that all the time. Mm. People, uh, because what it's not what just, you know, it's one thing to watch animal movies or something, like that, but we get, we tune into that social media and we tune into this social, this and this, and this person's opinion and that person's attack. And then we, even if we don't attack back, we internalize it came in, that energy came in. So I tell people, slow down on the social media. You don't need it. Gar that I guarantee you, it, it is adding nothing to your life. It will, uh, it will, can create uh, more angry thoughts. It can create more depression and it can put you in a position to attempt to follow a crowd and you don't know where the crowd's going. The last thing I tell people is, all this good energy is inside you. We don't start, we weren't born with negative energy. We, we've been living for so long on this planet. It's because we, we work with positive energy. It's already in you. Stop doing the things that you are doing to, uh, to negatively affect that. And if you're having a problem, by all means, get help. It's not a, a horrible thing to do. We're, all of us who love you and want to help you are waiting for you. Come and, come, come and talk to us. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. Our guest today has been Faust Ruggiero, author of the Fix Your Anger Handbook. And you can find out more about Faust Ruggiero and his wonderful work at his website, faustruggiero.com. And remember, when you release your anger and let it go, you heal yourself naturally. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.